Now that my sim rig is complete, I've finally been able to spend some time getting used to driving on it. I'm still really happy with the wheel, pedals and shifter I made in the last couple of videos, but there's definitely one major thing that's still missing before I can call this setup complete, the handbrake. So today I'm going to build one. All good projects have clearly defined goals, so let's start with that first. There are two different types of handbrake we have to choose from. A standard ratcheting brake like you'd find in a car or a lever style drift brake. Since I never really got into the truck driving sims or anything that would need a ratcheting handbrake, I'm going with the lever style instead. Since I already have a working design for my pedals, I'll keep the design functionally similar and make sure they all look like they're part of the same set. I want to use a load cell so we can accurately measure the force applied to the handbrake rather than just the position. And finally, I want this project to be approachable. A lot of you guys pointed out for the pedals video that laser cutting still isn't that cheap. So this time, I'll design a fully printed version to go along with the laser cut version. Let's get started. First, we need to choose a load cell. There's heaps of different sizes and shapes to choose from, but we need something that's going to be suitable for this application. And to work that out, we need to know how long our lever needs to be. I've never driven a real drift car before, but it seems like you'd want it to be pretty close to the steering wheel to minimize how long it takes to reach over and engage it. This height feels pretty comfortable to me, so let's call it 400 mil long. For the sake of keeping the design practical, we will need to keep the load cell pretty close to the bottom of the lever, meaning we'll have quite a bit of mechanical advantage over the load cell. These little 50 kilo load cells are a tempting option, but with so much of a lever, it would only take about 10 kilos of force applied to the handle to max out the capabilities of the sensor, which might not be enough for a convincing experience and would likely end up damaging the sensor if I happen to pull on it too hard. The NA151 cell that I used on the pedals has a rating of 200 kilos, and even though it's considerably more expensive than the little 50 kilo sensor, it's still one of the next cheapest options. The 200 kilo load rating should mean I'm safe to apply a bit over 40 kilos of force to the handbrake, which should be more than enough. Let's start with the printed design and then we'll build the laser cut version later. First up is the lever. I don't think a fully printed 400 mil long lever is a good idea and it wouldn't fit on most printers in one piece anyway, so I'm going to split it up into two parts, a base and a handle, and then join them with a bit of 10 mil steel rod. I'm printing both of these parts in PETG on the strength preset to ensure they are as strong as I can make them. There's no need for this to be hardened steel like I've got here. Even just a bit of 10 mil threaded rod would suffice, but I already had this here, so that's what I'm using. The base of the lever has holes for a pair of 625 bearings, which I'll install now. You'll also need to include the crush tube so that we don't put any side load on the bearings when we eventually tighten up the bolt that will go through them. Next, we need a way to attach all of this together and mount it to the frame. Mounting the lever arm is simple as we just need a hole to pass the M5 bolt through. I'll mount the load cell at an angle so that it points roughly towards the attachment point on the arm. To keep the design as simple as possible, I haven't bothered with the secondary pivoting plate like I did with the pedals. This just means that we will be a bit limited in travel compared to the pedals as the bolt will be passing through the hole in the load cell instead. We can always drill out the hole in the load cell if it doesn't provide enough travel, but let's try without it first. Now we just need to connect it up to the load cell. I'm using an M6 clevis on this end with a long M6 bolt through the hole of the load cell. I've printed a bushing in TPU with 75% infill and no external walls, and I'm using the same spring I used on the throttle pedal since I had a spare. They all just slide over the bolt before it goes through the load cell hole and then we can finish it off with a locking color so we can control how far forward the lever sits. To attach it to our sim ring, we just put two bolts through these holes and screw them into a pair of sliding nuts and just like that, we have a functional e-brake. We still need to tackle the electronics to make this work though, so let's do that now. I'm going to use the same INA333 board I ended up using for the pedals because it's cheap and does a great job of amplifying the signal to a level that our Arduino can read. If you watched my DIY SimRig video, you'll probably remember that this board does require some basic modifications to get it to function the way we want. I won't go into detail on the process again, but if you do want a more detailed rundown, make sure you check out the other video. I've put a link in the video description. Since our shifter is right next to the handbrake and has plenty of spare I.O. available on its Arduino, I'm just going to add the handbrake to that to save having too many different USB devices connected. V-out goes to one of the unused analog inputs. In this case, it will be A1, 
and ground gets connected back to one of the ground pins on the Arduino. Editor Dan here, I forgot to mention that you also need to connect one of the VCC pins from the Arduino back to the VCC pin on the INA333 board. I eventually plan to make a nice neat PCB for connecting all of this stuff together, but this will do for now. For the software, all I've had to do is map that analog input as an axis, and just like that, we have a handbrake. I'm sure some games won't support an analog input for a handbrake, so we can also just set a value in the software to trigger a button input so that it can still be used in those games. I'm pretty happy with the strength of the printed handbrake, but since I have access to a laser cutter, let's build an even stronger version with laser cut steel instead. If you want to build either of these projects yourself and you don't happen to have ready access to a fiber laser or a 3D printer, this video's sponsor can help. PCBWay provides 3D printing, PCB fabrication and assembly, sheet metal cutting and folding, as well as CNC machining services and even injection molding. Getting parts made is as simple as selecting a process, uploading a file, selecting a quantity, material and finish and hitting submit. I've had parts printed in clear resin, aluminium parts CNC machined then anodized and they've even done some laser cut and powder coated parts for my sim rig, along with countless PCBs in the time I've been working with them. The quality of their work speaks for itself, so make sure you check out the link in the video description the next time you need their services. Now, let's get started on the laser cut version. I've kept the geometry the same as the printed version, so the length of the handle and the distance of the load cell to the mounting point is the same. First, I'll laser cut the lever out of 5mm steel. The laser wasn't cutting quite as well as it usually does, so this part just needed a bit more of a clean up than usual. It's still cleaned up nicely and with a combination of etch primer and gloss black paint, it's now looking the part. The handle is just 3D printed in PETG and it slips on over the top of the lever and attaches with these two bolts. At the bottom of the lever, there are two 3D printed mounts for the same 625 bearings we used in the printed version, which just press in from either side. These parts were also printed in PETG on the strength preset and they just slot into the arm and then bolt in place. The base of the handbrake is just made up of four 3mm laser cut plates. The two smaller plates go on either side of the load cell and slot into here on the larger plates. Next, we can put the main bolt through the pivot point. I've installed a washer on the outside of the bearings and a printed spacer between the bearings so we can do up the bolt nice and tightly without damaging anything. This bolt holds everything together nicely, leaving the final two holes which we can bolt through to attach the base to our sim rig. I've printed some spaces for these holes so the bolts don't pull the plates together when we tighten them, and then the same combination of bolt, spring and 3D printed dampener can be installed like we did for the printed version. I've used M5 sliding nuts to attach it all to the extrusion. The software and the electronics are exactly the same between the two different versions, so all that's left to do now is test it. I decided to give Dirt Rally 2 a proper try this time. It did need a couple of lines of code added to its device defines XML file to get it to recognize the FF Beast wheel as an input. But now that that's done, it looks like it's working nicely. Let's test it. Well, one thing is for sure, much more practice is needed on my part to be any good at this. The handbrake is working nicely though. It's in a good spot and it feels pretty convincing to use, so I'd call that a win in my books. The spring does feel a little soft compared to the pedals because we have so much more leverage with this design, so I'll probably pick up a heavier spring to compensate for it. I've tried pulling on the brake as hard as I can manage with one hand and no amount of effort has caused any issues so far, so I think it should be pretty solid for a long time to come. Thanks for watching guys, let me know in the comments if you've got a related project or really anything you'd like to see me tackle. See you all next time.